I have been getting a lot of message. Nurse Miss Mary, can you please create a video on menstrual cycle? What is the difference between menstrual cycle and ovarian cycle? I have been getting, I've, get, I've gotten series of messages, series of requests about the menstrual cycle. So today I decided to make a video on the menstrual cycle. Good day everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as the nurse with the difference. And I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we're going to be talking about menstrual cycle the phases in menstrual cycle, some abnormal changes or abnormality in the menstrual cycle, and also the difference between the menstrual cycle and the ovarian cycle. By the end of this class, you will be able to understand all this correctly. But before we go into details, if you are new on our YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button. Please click on the subscribe button. Turn on the notification button so you get notified on any of our videos. Let's go there. Alright, welcome back. Like I earlier said, today I'm going to be telling, talking to you about the menstrual cycle. What is the menstrual cycle? The menstrual cycle is a complex cycle and is controlled by many different glands and the hormones that these glands produce. I know a lot of us, especially the girls, we are always having this menstrual flow. I feel, oh, it's just normal. There are a lot of things going on in the body. There are a lot of hormones that are being released into circulation. It's not just the vagina that actually coordinates this thing. The hypothalamus is involved. The pituitary gland is also involved when it comes to the menstrual cycle. That is why it is called a complex cycle. Then also, there are various phases involved in the menstrual cycle. We have the menstruation phase, we have the follicular phase, we have the ovulation phase, and we have the luteal phase. First of all, let's talk about the menstruation phase. As the name implies menstruation, it simply means your meses, the point in time where the meses comes out as blood on the pad. And during this period, ladies use either pad or tapons to actually help um, accept the blood and for easing um, movement all around. You get because if there's no party, there's no tapping, the lady will not be comfortable, right? The baby will not be able to carry out that activity. So, whenever you hear the menstruation phase, it's simply the period where the menses comes out. And during this period, generally, it is where the endometrium is disappointed. Because generally in the menstrual cycle, the endometrium, which is the innermost layer of the uterus, is always prepared for a baby. Every month, your body as a woman is always prepared to accept a baby. So finally, finally, the endometrium is disappointed. So the endometrium cries out, which is the meses. So your meses is the cry of the endometrium because the endometrium is what is disappointed because they already prepared the endometrium for fertilization and acceptance of that cycle that's coming in. So that is that for the menstruation phase. Then the second phase is the follicular phase. As the name implies, follicular phase. It is during this period that the follicles are being formed. So these follicles, they are actually formed as a result of the release of the hormones known as the follicle stimulating hormones. The follicle stimulating hormones. These hormones are being released by the pituitary gland. These hormones, they go to the ovaries. When they get to the ovaries, they stimulate the ovaries to produce these follicles. When these follicles are being produced, about 5 to 20 follicles are being produced. You get at that moment for them to get matured. So these growing follicles actually um, help. They are help to uh, make the uterus. They as they prepare the uterus for acceptance of um, its zygote for implantation. They they just help it. That's one of during this follicular phase. That is where the uterus starts preparation. Ah, we are preparing. The baby is coming. You understand? We are going to implant the baby. We are going to. Baby. So it is during this follicular phase that that happens, and that whole phase is stimulated by what the follicle stimulating hormone. Then the next phase is the ovulation phase. In the ovulation phase, 
that is when the eggs are being released into say into um, the fallopian tube for fertilization to take place so during this ovulation phase phase when a woman involved herself in sexual intercourse there's ejaculation and um, uh, there's ejaculation definitely and definitely there's going to be uh, a fertilization of the egg a zygote will be formed so during this ovulation phase that's where the egg is being released but before this ovulation phase which is during the follicular stage the growth of the follicles actually um, increase um, the level of the estrogen in the body. So the brains that the hypothalamus sends it, oh, there's increased estrogen in the body. So the hypothalamus sends a message to the pituitary gland to release what is called luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. So this increase in luteinizing hormone during this um, phase actually leads to the release of the egg. So, it's the luteinizing hormone that actually what leads to the release of the egg. And this ovulation period usually occurs two weeks before your menses. That is the middle of your cycle. It's the middle of your cycle. If you are undergoing 28 day cycle, 14, and the 14th day is your ovulation period. It's usually in the middle of the cycle. Then the last phase is the luteal phase. The luteal phase, the silent phase. Remember we said that the follicles form, then the eggs are being released. The eggs are released from here, the follicles. You get, but the follicles remain within the ovary, but the eggs go on their own. They'll go into the fallopian tube where fertilization will take place. But the follicles where these eggs are being released from remains in the ovary. So after about two weeks or so, these follicles transform, develop into a structure known as the corpus luteum. So this corpus luteum secretes progesterone and a little of estrogen. And this progesterone helps to prepare the uterus, help to work on the uterus, help to settle the uterus. Ah, prepare, baby is coming, baby is coming, baby is coming. You get. So if there is implantation in the uterus during that period, the corpus luteum, a hormone, sorry, a hormone is being released. Hormones are being released that helps to maintain the corpus luteum, and the corpus luteum keeps secreting the progesterone and all that. But if there is no implantation during the luteal phase, now what happens is that the um, the corpus luteum dies off. The corpus luteum, or the corpus luteum dies off. The corpus luteum withers off. Like I just said, when there's implantation. In that term, um, the uterus, when there's implantation of that fetus in the uterus, what happens is that hormones are being released. For example, your human gonadotropin hormone, HCG. That is what you detect when you do a um, pregnancy test using a strip. You put the, um, the PT strip inside the urine. The PT strip detects the human coronic gonadotropin hormone. And that is released when implantation has already um, taken place so those are the four phases of the menstrual cycle note that the first one is the menstruation which is the elimination of the endometrium the upper endometrium when when um, the egg is not implanted then the second stage is the follicular phase which is a stage where the follicles are being released are being formed in such a way that it leads to the ovulation phase where the egg is being released from um from the ovaries from the follicles then the last one which is the luteal phase which talks about the formation of the corpus luteum and also note that the follicular phase is guided or is possible with the help of the follicle stimulating hormone and the ovulation phase is possible with the help of the luteinizing hormone and this phase the emphasis is um, the progesterone then that takes us to common problems common menstrual problems common what common menstrual problems first common menstrual problem i have is the premenstrual syndrome a lot of ladies have this premenstrual syndrome before their mess is proper they start having fatigue they start feeling tired they start having headache some start having um lower abdominal pain as premenstrual syndrome they are just signs and symptoms that give you the clue oh your message will be coming soon you get then the other is dysmenorrhea Dysmenorrhea simply mean painful meses. A lot of people go down with painful meses. They complain of severe pains during their menstrual cycle. And it is believed that their rate at which um, the force with which the endometrium is being shed is high or something. 
So that's dysmenorrhea. Then the other is heavy menstrual bleeding. So people usually have heavy menstrual bleeding. And if not tackled properly, it can lead to anemia. And we all know anemia is reduced red blood cell as a re reduced red blood cell. That's the reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Then also amenorrhea. Amenorrhea is simply no meses. It's actually seen as a problem, except one is pregnant. That's only when you are expected to have amenorrhea. But if you're having amenorrhea and there's no signs of pregnancy, there's something wrong somewhere. So those are the common menstrual problems I would like to share with you. But if you have more that you want me to discuss, you can actually drop that in the comment section so I work on that. Then also, I have been getting a question, Lost Mercy, what is the difference between the ovarian cycle and the menstrual cycle? In terms of the ovarian cycle generally, it's basically talking about the ovaries, changes in the ovary, the cycle, that's changes in the ovary. Why the menstrual cycle generally ought to be um, changes, what happens in the uterus, how the uterus is being shared away, how the uterus is being formed. So when you are talking about the ovarian cycle, your emphasis should be on the ovaries. The release of the egg your emphasis should be what is happening to the eggs when you are talking about the menstrual cycle more emphasis should be laid on the shedding of the materials the endometrium what the changes that are taking place in of uh, the the uterus you get so that is the major difference between the menstrual cycle and the ovarian cycle and if you look at it basically the ovarian cycle is more or less embedded in the menstrual cycle thank you very much for staying tuned thank you very much for watching our video don't forget to like don't forget to drop your questions in the comment section don't forget to share with a friend if you got value for those that have not registered for our telegram class you have been missing a lot all you have to do is to send a message to the whatsapp number on your screen to get information about the registration and when you register you have access to all our voice notes and it makes it easy for you to tell us which topic in your classes you don't understand and you need us to make a voice note or a video for you so that is all i have to share with you today and i hope you got value see you in our next video bye